On Wednesday, the 19th of April, around 3,800 individuals set the newly reintroduced FIFA Football Asian Exam across 138 countries. The FIFA Asian Exam assessed candidates on their knowledge of the 528 pages of material and asked them to answer 20 multiple choice questions. The questions covered a range of topics taken from the six key FIFA documents the FIFA Football Agent Regulations, the Regulations on the Status and Transfer of Players, FIFA Status, FIFA Code of Ethics, FIFA Disciplinary Code, and the FIFA Guardian's Child Safeguarding Toolkit. FIFA had structured the exam by collecting a pool of around 200 questions, which were then randomly selected in each paper. Some candidates reported having up to four questions on the same article of the regulations in their exam as a result of this randomization. Consequently, the chances of an agent sitting the exact same examination as anybody else in the same room or agents that had taken the exam earlier in the day was extremely low. This meant that advice given by agents who had already set the exam in different time zones was null and void. Candidates had one hour to answer all 20 questions but were able to skip over questions and return to them if they felt unsure or to double check their answers if time allowed. However, in some countries there have been complaints over timing issues and the ability to check over answers. In some countries the charge to take the exam was around $50, whilst in other the cost was upwards of $1000 US dollar and higher than the minimum salary in the country. In many countries the exam began later than expected for a variety of reasons. Some associations had less than a handful of agents attempt the exam, whilst in one country there were almost 1000 candidates and the lengthy queues and check-in process meant the exam began over one hour late. Other reasons for delay included Wi-Fi connection failures, FIFA platform crashes, invigilator confusion and issues with the slow and faulty exam system. According to FIFA guidelines, candidates were required to provide their own laptop in order to access the exam through the FIFA agent platform and were allowed a clear plastic water bottle as well as the FIFA study materials without personal annotations. They would then be provided with pen and paper for mathematical calculations. However, these measures were not strictly or globally enforced. In less severe cases, candidates use iPads and tablets, simultaneously accessing social media and communication platforms. More worryingly, there were many reports of collusion and collaboration between candidates in several associations. Candidates could only choose to sit the exam in three official FIFA languages, English, French and Spanish. For a large portion of candidates, this was their second or even third language and created an additional dimension of difficulty, especially under time pressure. In some countries, the invigilators permitted candidates to use digital translation tools to translate the questions into their preferred language, contradicting FIFA's regulations and giving these candidates an advantage over other agents who could not translate the questions. In many countries, there was also a lack of control at the end of the exam process, which created further difficulties. The FIFA portal shut automatically after the 60 minutes had expired, but many candidates who finished prematurely were able to leave whilst others continued to take the exam. On the Thursday, eight days after the exam, candidates across the world began to receive emails congratulating them on passing the exam and inviting them to pay the license fee to complete the final stage of obtaining their license or giving them the news they had failed. 52% or 1,962 of the 3,800 individuals were successful. This pass rate is a lot higher than the 20% pass rate in the last FIFA exam in 2015. Congratulations to all who were successful in their attempt of the exam this time around and for those that did not pass or did not yet attempt to, there is sufficient time to prepare for September and pass at the next attempt. Thank you for watching, we hope you have enjoyed the video and invite you to like and subscribe and to follow the Urquid Circuit Academy social media platforms for more information on exam preparation courses and other agent education.